Forest Hills Public Schools cleaner remains on leave tonight after he was arrested on federal child pornography charges. The district confirmed that 28-year-old Bradley Arkestein worked in several schools. No Forest Hills students are believed to be his victims, but some parents previously raised alarm bells over his behavior. News 8's Byron Tollefson talked with a local advocate about the signs that kids and parents should look out for to protect themselves from abusers. In a letter to parents last night, Forest Hills Public Schools said that Arcus Stein had worked for the district since last February, working for five different schools. The district said that criminal background and unprofessional conduct checks did not show any red flags. 28-year-old Bradley Arkestein, a Forest Hills Public Schools cleaner, remains off the job after being arrested on federal child pornography charges. After the FBI says he shared child pornography with an undercover agent, saying he viewed it for a decade. The agency says Arkestein told investigators he worked at an elementary school and talked to the children there, several of whom were friendly with him. A Forest Hills parent told News 8 her daughter said that Arkestein often talked to her and mentioned his girlfriend. The FBI says Arkestein admitted to smelling shoes of first through fourth grade students. School leaders in Forest Hills say, based on the FBI's investigation, no children from the district were victimized. But that may not be enough to calm a parent's fear, something Emily Kulhanek, an advocate, deals with every day. Families are very overwhelmed when they come through the doors. Um, it's very overwhelming to navigate the system. The Children's Advocacy Center of Kent County brings children and families affected by abuse together with law enforcement and support professionals. Kolhanik says grooming is more prevalent than people think. I think each person who commits abusive acts knows exactly the game that they're playing. Kolhanik says the average age of disclosure of child sexual abuse is 52. She says survivors are less likely to come forward when the abuser is a trusted person in their life. Someone who's committing those acts is going to try to get the biggest investment with the least amount of risk. She says parents should talk to their kids as early as possible about body safety and boundaries, what's okay and not okay, so they know the signs if something isn't right and they can understand when they're being targeted. Talk to them about who is allowed to do that. What are those feelings that come up? What does it mean to be safe? She says families should remember these red flags, an abuser having extended alone time with a child and overattention. If kids don't share that, parents can watch out for changes in their behavior. The biggest red flags are behavioral changes, whether it's sleeping, isolating, it can be uh, mental health concerns. It can be, again, that over-attachment or isolation in their peer. Kolhanik also said that survivors can come forward to doctors, educators, and therapists, people who are required by law to report the abuse.